welcome to the Creativity Shells online sewing classes. My name is Shalancia Daniel and today I am going to be teaching you how to make this adorable little creature called a love hug. Many of you who know the Creativity Shell might be familiar with the love hug's cousin, our love bugs, but today and for the rest of 2024, we have a new campaign called Love Hugs, Not Drugs, and we are going to teach you how to make this adorable, huggable caterpillar called the Love Hug. It has a place for you to place your arms. You can put pockets in there, or you can put hot packs and cold packs. And we designed these to do exactly like they're called, which is to give you a hug. For youth mental health awareness, one of the main things that we want to talk about this year is just our youth's dependency on drugs. And with mental health, sometimes the first thing to do is to take a pill. And what happens when that pill is no longer available? We're finding that a lot of students, a lot of youths are turning to street drugs. So we want to work together as a community, find some natural ways that we can bring positive mental health to ourselves and to the people around us. And it can definitely begin by just having an adorable, soft, huggable creature to give you a hug. The size of your love bug really depends on the size of the person who's going to be using it. This particular love hug has seven links to it. I am going to, or we are going to make one today that has nine links to it because I like when my hands are down a little bit. Uh, this seven link is really good for a child or somebody who's probably just under five feet tall, or if you kind of like to hold your hands more like this. If you like to have your hands down a little bit lower, like down to here, then definitely the nine link love hug is most recommended. The pattern for this love hug is available on our website, which is www.creativityshell.org. Some of these patterns will also be available in local quilt shops, and it has all the instructions as well as the circle pattern that you need to cut out for your template. To make the nine link love hug, you also need 24 layer cake pieces of fabrics. You want to have them in in different colors. I mean, I'm saying you want to, you don't absolutely have to. You can pattern this any way that you like, but if you have it in different colors, both for the front and the back, then it makes it look really, really awesome. And it's a good opportunity to use some of those fun fabrics that you might not uh, think of using in something else that's more traditional, you can definitely have fun with this. Before you begin sewing, you will need to cut a nine inch circle from each of your layer cakes. You want to do this for both the front and the back of this love hug. So you have 18 circles. And then your pockets, which should be folded and ready to go. Once you have your pieces cut, you want to lay your love hug out with the bright sides facing up in the order in which you want your links to appear from front to back and from top to bottom. If you are making the nine inch love hug like I am currently making, you should currently have 18 circles ready to sew. Let's begin with one of our end pieces. Keep in mind, this is the front of the face and this link here will start linking to the rest of your love hug. You are going to place your pocket folded. It's a really good idea to iron this first. You're going to match up the end to end 
and you're going to fold it straight across. You're going to lay the pocket for the second side. You're just gonna kind of just sandwich the two of them together. And keep in mind, if your fabric is directional, um, if, you're, if you want the end or the front of your love hug to have the direction up here, you're going to place this just on top of this, just like this. You will then pin it and sew all the way around this circle, leaving a three inch gap right here. When you pin, you can just pin on the interior. You do not need to pin all the way around. Just make sure that your pin captures all one, two, three, four of these fabrics. You can set this one aside and keep going with the rest of your links. You wanna match these circles up, bright sides to bright sides. And pin. Now, when you sew your interior links, you're going to leave two ends open. You're going to leave a three inch gap at the top. So you're going to sew all the way around. And a really good way to actually do this is to fold this in half and get your inch and a half on this side, your inch and a half on this side, and then flip it over and mark this the same. What this does now, when you're ready, you, your opening is going to be here and here. Keep in mind this is a circle, so it can be almost any point. You're going to sew around and stop here, and sew around and stop here. You are going to do this exact same step with link number two, three, and four. At this point, I have my head, I have my link number two, my link number three, and my link number four, prepped and ready to go. For link number five, or my center link, I'm going to put it aside right now so I can focus on link number six, seven, and eight. Links six, seven, and eight are exactly the same as links two, three, and four, so I'm just going to go ahead and prep those right now before I come back to this one. So I have link number six, link number seven, and number eight. Link number nine is my second head. So I'm going to make this one just like how we made link number one. We're going to fold our pocket with the folded edge facing the inside with this being the top of our head. We are going to sandwich our second pocket just right on top of it. And we are going to place our other circle just on top. And remember, we're going to leave a three inch opening right here and we're going to sew all the way around to close this head. 
we definitely want to pin these fabrics and the opening will be our three inch opening right here. This is the only opening we will leave for lengths number one and number nine, or if you're making more or less lengths, your first and your last link. I skipped over link number five or my center link because I wanted to do something a little bit different with it. This step is absolutely optional. You do not have to add pockets to your love hug, but in this instance, I'm going to add two pockets to it. I'm going to add a folded layer cake with a folded edge being on the inside. And I'm going to place another one just on top of it with the folded edge also on the inside. What will happen when I sew this, I will still leave my three inch opening at both ends. But what will happen is that if I want to use this pocket afterwards to put a heat pack or a cool pack in it, it gives me the space to do that. Once you have that those pockets sandwiched in, you now can pin this together and we will also go ahead and leave that three inch opening on the sides of this link so that once we sew them all, we can start linking them together. Once you are ready to start sewing, I find a really good uh, tool to use as far as seam allowance when I'm sewing circles is using the width of the foot of my sewing machine. You do not necessarily need to backstitch for this one, but just be mindful that when you are going around curves, you are sewing a little bit on the bias and it does tend to stretch a little bit. So don't rush it, just go nice and slow and just use your hands to help this machine go around the bend. If you find right here that your fabric starts bunching a little bit, just lift your lever and slowly lower it back down and it will help to ease up some space in that fabric and get around your circles as best as you can. So just be very gentle with that curve as you're going around. Make sure that you have all of those extra pockets that you have encased, closed in, and also do a double check. This is folded, so it's not really coming out the same, but just double check that both of those fabrics are indeed together and that you are capturing both of them in your stitch. And when you get back to your line, you are good to go. You can release your fabric. When you're sewing the interior pieces, they are a little bit different and does require you to lower and your press your foot up and down. So you're going to start at your starting point and you're just going to sew around in like a half moon shape. You get to your opening where you need to stop for this three inch gap. You can release your machine, release your thread, and then go on over to the second half of it and continue sewing. You are going to do this step for lengths two, three, four, and six, seven, and eight. You get back to your opening, you stop and release. So you should have an opening at this end in here and you should have another opening at this end here. Um, you can also just do a double check just to make sure that both of your openings are uh, exactly across from each other. And this does take a little bit, so I will fast forward this video so you don't have to 
watch me do all my steps, but if you are sewing this at home, you definitely want to take the time and sew all of these links first, because once they're sewn, then you will then begin to start linking this Love Hub together. And you definitely want to sew them all first. Sometimes some people want to sew each one and start stuffing it. I say since you're at the step, just go ahead and just sew everything. Um, you will have another chance to sew again while you turn them over to the bright side and start stuffing it. But for now, we just want these links to be sewn. Remember, when you are sewing this center link, which is my number five link, you want to just make sure that all of your pieces are accounted for, your pockets are nicely folded on the inside, you're capturing all the pieces of fabric. At any given point when you are sewing around this center link with the pockets, you have about one, two, three, four, five, six layers of fabrics that you are sewing with, six. So you want to be mindful, you want to be gentle with it, and you just want to make sure that you are not missing any of your pieces. You will also notice that I'm not necessarily backstitching this. Um, you will have a chance to top sew this again, which you will get your backstitching in there. I always tell my beginner sewers, always backstitch. So if that is a habit and you want to backstitch, there is absolutely no harm in doing so. Um, we just want to uh, make sure that this love hug will last for a very long time. And then our last link, which is the second head, we will sew it just like we did the first one where we leave our opening at this top across here and we're going to go all the way around, not leaving a second opening in the bottom. And remember, you wanna capture all of these folded edges 
uh, that are going to be your pockets. If your fabric starts bunching up, you want to just lift that lever, loosen it up, and keep going. There's a lot of fabrics in here. I'm just getting a little bit of a fold here. I'm going to loosen that up and just go right, keep right going. Keep on sewing. going to stop right here and leave our opening just across here. Once I'm finished sewing, I'm going to take my pins out and I'm going to trim away the excess fabric. This with the edges sticking out is one of the edges for one of my heads okay during this opening i'm going to make two snips i'm going to snip here and snip here which will give me a little bit of a lip for when i'm sewing and because this is a circle i'm going to carefully clip around these edges so that it gives me some easement in this circle as I flip it over. You want to be really careful that you don't cut into your threads. You just want to free up a little bit of room so this circle has a nice smooth movement once you turn it over to the bright side. And then with this opening that you have, keep in mind this is your head, you are going to turn this to the bright side. Now be mindful, there's two pockets here. You want to go into the center of this and turn your pockets in so you have a pocket on this side and also on this side with the opening right here. And clipping my edges, I have a really nice round head for my love hug and one of my links is now ready to go. For my interior links, again, I'm going to remove my pins. I'm going to just clip here. I'm not going to clip in between this end and I'm gonna clip here and here. And then I'm just going to clip around the perimeter of this circle, being careful not to cut into my stitching line and I will do the same for legs two, three, and four, and then six, seven, and eight. And then you can use one of your openings to turn it over to the bright side. And this is a really good idea to iron these out once you have turned them over. And you should have a link like this with an opening at one end and an opening at the other. And both sides of it should look like this. When you're flipping your interior, you should have two openings on this side. Keep the pockets on one side and then just flip it completely over. So that when you Turn it over to the bright side. You have basically a little opening here so you can put hot or cold packs or even something weighted down to give yourself a weighted love hug. At this point, you should have all of your body pieces for your love hug completed. You should have nine lengths, two heads, one back, and your um, interior pieces. Let's start sewing these together. Let's start stuffing. So you want to start with one of your end pieces 
and you are going to use your opening to insert some fiberfill. Now this is a love hug. You definitely want to insert enough of it, but you don't want to make it too much so that it becomes extremely difficult to sew. Perfect. This opening now, we are going to add our second link to it. You're going to fold this down like this. And you're going to have this end up and you're going to insert it and Basically, stitch it across like this. Now, do not stuff your second link until you have this one sewn across. I'm going to just turn this around so it makes it a little bit easier to see. If you have not done so, it is also a really good idea to iron this down. It helps to get your fold across and you basically want to sandwich this second link of this love hug into the first and we're going to sew right across. If you've ever made a puff quilt, this is going to remind you of making a puffed quilt. We don't stuff this one here just yet because we want to make sure that it just makes it a little bit easier for us to sew. We have not been backstitching, and if you have, then that's fine, but if you definitely need to backstitch this stitch, and we're going to just go straight across. If you have any bunting in your fabric, just lift that paper, lower it straight down, and we're going to go straight across, and so. You wanna go around this little bend a little bit of your circle, go a little bit past your sewing line, and backstitch before you release. It should be together. Just double check that you have it sewn equally on both sides. Once you've connected the head to your first link, you're going to add some more fiber fill. Remember, we don't want to add too much. We want this to be soft and huggable, but if we overstuff it, stuff it it makes it just a little bit too tricky to sew. You can, if you have any scraps, you can definitely put some scraps in here as well. Um, you just don't wanna put any hard uh, fabric pieces, but you can definitely put your little bits of scraps in here. And once you have finished your second link, you can fold this down so you have a finished edge Definitely iron across here and go ahead and start attaching your third link.
by the time you get to your very last two links in this love hug, this will be the trickiest part for you to sew, but you can do it. You want to definitely stuff your second last link with fiberfill. And you also want to stuff the last link as well, since this does not have an opening for you to put fiberfill on the other end. To help make connecting these two links easier, once you have your final link stuffed, go ahead and just flatten this out and do a straight stitch on your sewing machine to close it up. Once you've sewn it straight, you've kind of taken a little bit of the hard work out for yourself and you can just go ahead and insert it into this opening. And when you do get this under your sewing machine, definitely use your hands to press this down so that it's not going to be too bulky for you to sew. And so you can also see your pins, you can see your seam, you can see exactly what you're doing. Remember, if this is just too tricky to get in your machine with all that fiber fill, you can definitely hand sew this. Um, it does help to make it um, a little bit less challenging, but if you're up to the task, you can definitely put this under your sewing machine and finish this love hug up. Hey guys, thank you so, so much for sewing with me. I hope you enjoy your cute, cuddly, and soft love hug. These are so much fun. Um, if you want to add some buttons to make it a little face on the front, you can. These little pockets are great to rest your hands. You can use these inside pockets to add hand warmers if you want. Uh, and don't forget this pocket here if you want to add a hot pack, a cold pack, or to weigh it down to make it a weighted blanket. Those are all different options that you can add to your love hug. I hope that you guys sew so many of these and give them to children in need. And um, just remember the slogan that we're going for, love hugs, not drugs. Let's try to do our best to help the next generation not, be, not become so dependent on drugs and really try to find some creative ways to focus on positive mental health. Thank you guys so much.